You got to take the pain because what God does is he transforms the pain into power. And let me just minister to somebody in here. Your pain was not in vain. Your struggle is not in vain. God is working something in the midst. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It took you going through the pain to understand that God was working some power. While the devil and the world was working on the outside, God was busy doing his work on. Uh, All right, notice now that Paul, he points out that we become conquerors through the love of God. He points out that the love of God is a perfecting work. It is a transforming power. It sees what you will become, not where you are. It sees what you will become. It does not see where you are right now. And then not only does it see what you will become, but the love of God, it sees what you will become. It connects to you until you become it. That's the transforming power. This is our, look, look, look at your connection to your children. When we have children, I know my children, I don't see them where they are. I see them where they're going. So I make every resource available to them so that they can accomplish. I want you to walk with me now. This is the love of God. This is the transforming power of God. We see beyond their imperfections and we invest. We sacrifice for them. Now, let me bless you. Now, this is the difference between love and lust because love gives but lust only takes you see love will give but lust only takes you see see you let me let me tell you something now here is lust lust will take everything from you today because it does not care about your tomorrow lust will get everything it can get from you today because it does not plan on sticking around for the consequence of tomorrow the difference with love is love will invest in you today because it intends to be with you tomorrow. So if you do good tomorrow, I'm doing good. That's what love says. Yeah. Love don't see you where you are, but it sees you where you're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the difference, the difference between lust and love. Uh, and the, the problem is now that many of us, we have the intent to love, but we don't have the extent to love. We intend to love. We reach for folk who we think we can love into being right. Uh, am I the only one in here? Uh, you saw him, he was fine. And you said, that is my man. Until you got him home for a couple of months and discovered uh, that the love that you had was not enough to keep him here. Yeah, yeah he still dogged you out. Oh uh, yeah, there's some man in here. She was like a Coke bottle. Yes, she was. And all the way pretty. And you said, that's my wife. Only to get her home and discover uh, that things that you thought was going to happen end up, uh, yeah, yeah, we reach for stuff because we have the intent to love, but we don't have the extent to love. Yeah, we'll love because we want to love, but we don't have the power to continue loving. Uh, yeah, I've seen many failed relationships relationships, many failed marriages uh, fall apart due because they did not have the extent of their intent. Yeah, everybody wants the glamour of love, but when it comes down to putting in the groundwork, nobody wants to do the groundwork. Everybody wants the reward without the labor. Everybody want to eat, but don't nobody want to cook. Everybody want to sing, but don't nobody want to practice. Everybody want the glamour, but they don't want to do the work. The devil is a lie. You got to roll your sleeves up and prove something extent of the intent yeah, 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 yeah. and when I when I intend to love but I don't have the extent of love sooner or later I'm going to walk away because I did not have the strength to love the object to the extent that that it needed to be loved but when I look at God he gives me a good picture of intent and extent. Now, watch now. What the Bible says is that for God so loved the world. That's his intent. He intends to love the world. The preceding now comes. It says, for he gave his only begotten son. Now, when I look at his intent and then I look at his extent, the extent proves that he was willing to go as far as it took to get me the help that I needed. Huh? Let me minister to somebody in here. That's how love operates. Yeah, what love does is it sacrifices until you become. Yeah, love goes through the bad in order to get to a. Uh, yeah, I want to preach to somebody in here. 
Here's my question now. Here's my question now. Can you keep loving when you're getting nothing in return? The power, uh, that's what we're talking about, the power of true love. The, the question is now, can you continue to love the object when the object is completely unlovable or not giving you anything in return? Yeah, yeah when I see God's intent and I see his extent, uh, I see that his extent proves that he loves me enough to keep me, uh, to love me through my circumstances. Uh -huh. Many of us, when I ask the question, can you continue loving in spite of, when can you continue? Most of us, the answer is no. Because nowadays, we don't love the person for the person. We love the person for what the person has. We love the person for the what the person can give me back. Yeah, yeah that's how we love nowadays. We love the person because of how they make us feel. And you need to just quit lying and stop telling folk you love him. What you need to say is I love the way you make me feel and if you stop making me feel like that, then it's over. Yeah. Let me bust your bubble. That's not love, sweetheart. Yeah, that's not love. Yeah, that's not love. Yeah. That's what most of us call love though. As long as you give me something in return, then I love you. As long as you make me feel a certain way, then I love you. Yeah, but as soon as it stops, uh, I know I'm walking down your street this morning. <laughs> the power of true love. See, see the difference is, the difference is, is that true love continues. This is, this is how God's love is able to transform us because the love of God sees what you will become and it hangs on until you become it. It, it hangs on until you become what his love said you could become. And, and that's why I thank God because he did not give up on me when I was completely unlovable. He didn't give up on me when I didn't give him nothing in return, but he kept on loving me until he saw that that boy that was on the corner selling drugs would one day be standing in the pulpit preaching the gospel. So I can't give up on him just yet. You ought to learn. I feel preaching in this place. You better learn that the folk in your life, you ought to thank God that he gave you some people in your life that's able to love you even when you treated them like crap. You better thank God that he put some folk in your life that didn't give up on you at the first sign of trouble. That's why I thank my God because he didn't give up on me even when I didn't love him back. I purposely turned and walked away but God kept loving me when I didn't love myself. He kept on loving me. Yeah, you ought to thank God. Take about five seconds and say thank you Lord for loving me in spite of myself. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me when I turned and walked away. Thank you, Lord. Somebody in here, you need to thank mama for not giving up on you. She kept on believing. Thank you, mama for believing in me uh, when I didn't believe in myself. Uh, somebody needs to thank daddy. Uh, daddy, thank you uh, for believing in me uh, when I didn't believe uh, in myself. Uh, somebody needs to thank uncle. Uh, somebody needs to thank Amy uh, for believing uh, in the best of me. Uh, I thank God because uh, he saw uh, in me uh,